Hi, I'm Silly Jane from SiliconMoles.com and today I'm going to show you how to make snowy mountains. Snowy mountains are a kind of hybrid between pink and white type marshmallows and Rocky Road because I always think Rocky Road is just a bit of a letdown and a bit too kind of sickly. So this is a new recipe they I've uh, come up with which I hope you'll um, like. It's very simple to make and we don't actually need very many ingredients to do this. We're going to make our own homemade marshmallow and then our bottom kind of biscuit and chocolate base. For the recipe you're going to need the white of two eggs, some desiccated coconut, 500 grams of just white ordinary white granulated sugar, a couple of packets of coconut paste and some chocolate. Today I've got some milk chocolate and some white chocolate because I'll probably do some bases in both. And you'll need a little bit of vanilla extract and some cake release spray. Cake release spray is a really handy thing to have. I'm going to use it in the inside of our silicon bakeware molds to help the marshmallow release so it doesn't stick. Um, I've also got a couple of sachets of Dr. Otter gelatin granules. One sachet of these is said to set one pint of liquid if you're making jelly, but for the sake of marshmallows, you need two. If you're using gelatin sheets, I'd recommend you use nine leaf sheets of platinum grade gelatin instead of the um, gelatin granules. Okay, so just to start with, we're going to put the chocolate aside for now because we're not going to use that at the moment, and the biscuits and the coconut. into a large, a large non-stick family saucepan. I'll we'll just put that in there. And I am going to add to that 250 ml of water. Okay. We're going to set this and bring it up to the boil. So you're just going to put that on a high heat and leave it to its own devices. It should need stir, I've got a little shake to this bit up. Just going to put that on the heat until it comes to a nice rolling boil. Okay, the sugar and water are in the pan, um, starting to get up to temperature now. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the gelatin on the go. What we do is we just take the two packets of gelatin and add it to 125 ml of cold water. Always add the gelatin to the water and never the other way around. Oh, I've spilled a bit. There's plenty in there anyway. Okay, put that in there. And then just give it a stir. Making sure that there's no big clumpy bits. That gelatin is going to absorb all that water and you'll see in a little while that it's going to become a thick mass. I'm going to set that aside for 10-15 minutes where the sugar is going to come up to the boil. Okay, our gelatin is set aside, so we're going to break two eggs and put the white of these eggs into a large bowl. We don't want any yolk in here at all. Make sure your bowl is nice and clean. I previously used it for weighing the sugar, um, but other than that, you know, it's worth giving it a wipe down with some lemon juice because doing that will take any grease or residues off the inside of the bowl. Just separate the whites out of these eggs. And put the yolks aside because we don't need those today. Okay, you can see now that the sugar is on a good rolling boil and the temperature is sitting quite, it's rising quite nicely. It's now 100 degrees centigrade. We want that line on here on the sugar thermometer if I can just show you. To get up to just above where it says firm ball, that's 100. And we, want, we want 122 degrees centigrade on here. When the temperature reaches 110, is when we're going to start whipping our egg whites to firm peaks.
Okay, you know when your egg white is done enough, when you can turn up the bowl upside down and the egg white stays put. It's not moving at all, it's nice and firm. Nice. Okay, our sugar has now reached um, the correct temperature. So we're going to take it off the heat and add the gelatin. Just remove the sugar from the water first of all. And switch the powder off. Now, we want to just wait a few seconds until that's kind of the bubbles subside and it just cools down just a little bit. Don't add the gelatin when it's far too hot. The gelatin itself has kind of gone really quite stiff now. Now, now it's not, you don't want to ever put, put gelatin into boiling liquid. Right, so you lose a lot of the setting properties. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the gelatin into the um, hot sugar and it's going to foam up quite a lot. You do need to be careful here because um, hot sugar can obviously cause really quite bad burns. So we're going to give that a really good mix in until the gelatin dissolves. And the next step is to whip, is to pour this into the egg whites and whip it on a high speed. What we're trying to do here is put air into it and cool it down at the same time. You can see. It's going to get a bit noisy in my thread. You could do with extra hands. And switch the plug socket on. Now to start with, it's going to look really soupy and wet, but don't worry about that. That will thicken up a lot as it cools down. At this point, when you're whipping it up, we're going to also add a few drops of vanilla. Probably about a teaspoonful. This is vanilla extract, pure vanilla. Okay, I've been whipping this for maybe about five minutes now, and it does need another couple of minutes, but you'll see that it is getting quite thick. Um, I'll show you when it's when it's ready in another couple of minutes just before I pipe it. It wants to be... Okay, that's about right. It's about a spinnable consistency. The sort of like the marshmallow fluff that you get at a jar. It will firm up a bit as it sets. And as you can see, it's, some of it is um, staying on the ends of the, the beaters now. Okay. What we're going to do now is just put this marshmallow into a large disposable piping bag. so much easier. We sell these piping bags in our web shop if anybody's interested in rolls of 100 or in packs of 10 and they're just so easy to use. And what we're going to do is just transfer, pour some of this mallow into the piping bag. The rest of it in later. Just give it a shake down and twist the end. We're ready to just cut, we don't need a nozzle on this. Oops, we're having a bit of a mallow escape like Ghostbusters. Right, okay, so what we're going to do now is just cut the end of this off and pipe them into our trays. Here's my mould. I'm just going to nip the end off this bag and pipe into the cells. I'm going to fill the cells within about five, five or six millimetre of the top. Is like marshmallows level and um, liquid enough that it will level itself out. And this batch should be enough to give us about 18, we'll soon find out.
Don't fill them too full or we won't have any room for the biscuit base. Okay, so I've got 200 grams of melted chocolate in here and I've got 180 grams approximately of um, broken biscuit pieces in this bowl. I'm going to add the, the, the pieces to the chocolate and give it a good stir until we've got about the right amount. I've got it on scales here. Should have used a bigger bowl, hey? That's about the right ratio, I'm quite happy with that. You see that the biscuits are quite nicely coated in chocolate, but it's a kind of sandy, crumbly type of type of mix, a bit like concrete. Just put this to the side. Okay, next all we're gonna do is take some of our mallow that's been sitting in one of these trays. I don't know if you can see, just have a quick peek, yep. And put a few spoonfuls into the top of each cell. Just give it a squish out with the end of your spoon. Just fill the bottom so that we can't see any mallow through the surface to about level with the top. The reason I'm doing this in two batches is, rather than one big batch is because I don't want the chocolate and the biscuit setting up and going hard on me too quickly before I've finished putting it all into the mould. So I would suggest you do the same. You mix too much up at once, it's um, going to go to hard concrete lump. These have only just been in the um, set aside for five or ten minutes. Could do with a little bit longer. The chocolate's only just set in and no more. But anyway, all we're going to do is just peel the um, cookie out the um, mould. And as you can see, they release beautifully easily. I'm going to roll it in desiccated coconut. And as they're so sticky, it's going to stick on here no problem at all. If they were if they were properly set on the bottom, it wouldn't stick to the chocolate. But I need to get this tutorial done and finished today for you, so I'm just trying to get a, do a quick one here. I think the um, white chocolate ones have set up a bit harder. So basically, you just peel it away. You'll see it sticking to the sides a little tiny bit if you've missed any greasy spots, and just pop it out. There we go. And these ones are set nice and hard. That's a, a white chocolate one. Just make sure that the um, desiccated coconut is stuck nicely all over. In the middle, give any excess to tap off. That's it, we're done. I hope you've enjoyed my YouTube tutorial on how to make snow mountains. And if you liked the video, give us a big thumbs up. 
Um, and if you enjoyed the video, like it to leave a comment below. Thank you.